Today we shall be looking at caput sasdanum and cephalohematoma. Caput sasdanum and cephalohematomas are two common neonatal scalp swellings that occur during delivery. Both of these conditions occur due to birth traumas, but they differ in location, content, and clinical implication. Therefore, it is important for you to make an accurate diagnosis for an appropriate management. Let us have a look at the causes of cephalohematomas and caput sacedanum. In cephalohematoma, there is a rupture of the blood vessels between the periosteum and the skull. The cephalohematomas occur due to a prolonged labor or an instrument-assisted delivery, such as a vacuum-assisted delivery. On the other hand, a caput sacedanum occurs due to a pressure from the cervix or the vaginal walls during delivery, and there is a risk increase in case of forceps delivery or vacuum delivery. Looking at these two images, you are able to differentiate between caput sacedanum and cephalohematomas. When we consider the mechanism of development, caput sacedanum occurs as an edema above the periosteum and it crosses the suture lines and it forms from venous congestion and venous pressure. Looking at cephalohematomas, the bleeding is below the periosteum. It is limited by the sutures and it develops as blood accumulates post-trauma. Clinically, caput sacedanum occurs at birth, it is soft and has a pitting tendency, it crosses suture lines and there will be features of scalp bruising. On the other hand, on the cephalohematomas, cephalohematoma occurs hours after birth, it is firm and is well defined. A cephalohematoma does not cross the suture lines and the skin remains intact. When comparing caput sacedanum and cephalohematomas, caput sacedanum occurs during birth and cephalohematoma occurs or develops hours after birth. A caput sacedanum occurs above the periosteum while a cephalohematoma is below the periosteum and a caput sacedanum crosses the suture lines, it is soft on palpation and resolves within days. However, cephalohematoma do not cross the suture lines, they are firm on palpation and resolve in weeks to months. While looking at complications, caput sacedanum is known to be benign and there is a little risk of jaundice if the bruising is significant. On the other hand, a cephalohematoma causes jaundice that results from excessive red blood cell breakdown and, in rare cases, there could be an infection or a skull fracture or calcification of the area. In terms of management, caput sacedanum you need to observe as it results by itself within one to three days. And in case there is jaundice, you need to treat it appropriately. With cephalohematoma, you need to monitor the bilirubin levels as it takes some time to resolve, basically in weeks. And if there is any infection, you need to drain it and consult with a neonatologist in case of calcification.